like you lost your best friend. <laughs> How did you get out of there? Yvette, have you seen Chuck? <laughs> He's not up there. <laughs> How did you get out? <laughs> Chuck? <laughs> Holy hydrogen, you're invisible. Completely invisible. <laughs> calm down, calm down. I know it's no fun for a chimp to be invisible, but you're making history, Chuck. You're going to be bigger than King Kong. <laughs> whoa, whoa. It's all right, it's all right. Don't be afraid. It's all right. Come on, hold still, Chuck. Whoa, whoa. Come on, Chuck. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Chuck. Hey, Sandy, come on, please. Would you stop making the racket? I'm trying to figure out these batting averages here. Jack, I can't stop typing now. Gilman wants the story by 10. The art robberies. There was another one today. Oh, come on. Who cares about stealing pictures? It's stealing bases the readers want to know about, you know? Stealing bases? Yeah, stealing bases. If I am not interrupting. Oh, Mr. Gilmer, we were just having a little debate. What do you think is the most important, art robberies or the World Series? Now, that sounds like a very worthwhile discussion. Maybe you two would like to continue with someplace else, like the unemployment office. No. <laughs> sorry, Mr. Gilmore. Don't give me sorry if you want to make it as a reporter. I I'm almost finished. Almost? That's worse than sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry? Almost. Sorry, almost. I oh, go in here. That better not be a personal call. It won't be. Sandy Martinson. Sandy, I have to talk to you right away. Yes, sir. That sounds like it could be a clue. Sandy, this is your Uncle Dudley. Just tell it to me, slowly and distinctly. Sandy, this is your Uncle Dudley. If you could excuse me just one moment, sir. This sounds like it could be really big. Carry on, Martinson. Right, sir. Cover for you. What's your excuse? <laughs> Uncle Dudley, you know I'm not supposed to receive personal calls here. I know, but Chuck is gone. Who's Chuck? Your lab assistant? Chuck is my chimp. One minute he was here, the next minute he was gone. Well, he'll come back when he's hungry. Not that kind of gone. He's invisible. Uncle Dudley, everything that's gone is invisible. No, no, you don't understand. I mean, I mean, he's gone, but he's still here. All that's left is... 
Uncle Dudley, are you feeling all right? Sandy, this is a scientific breakthrough. An invisible chimp. This story could be your first byline. I'm on my way. That'll call mine. Oh. Hi, Dan. Oh, hi, honey. Dan, uh, about our lunch this afternoon. I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to cancel. Sandy, I miss you. I haven't seen you in almost uh, 17 hours. Well, don't blame me this time. Blame Chuck. Blame him. I'll book him. <laughs> that may be a little rough. Chuck's a chimp. A chimp? Oh, good old Uncle Dudley's done something again, and i got to get right over there. <laughs> Who are you interested in, me or that chimp? Well, I don't know. I haven't met the chimp yet. Bye. Sandy, what is happening? And what's going on? Me! She is cute. How did it happen, Chuck? How did you do it? I mean, we've been through a lot together. I mean, the learning experiment, the Pavlov experiment, the behavior modification experiment. But this, this is something else again. I have to know, Chuck, and somehow you'll have to tell me. Scientists. <laughs> there, there, little guy. You're probably scared half to death, huh? Here, let me get you out of, get you out of the cage. Oh, come on. Come on, I'll just hold you. And maybe that'll calm you down. Yeah. There, there. <laughs> here and gone at the same time? See for yourself. I don't see anything. That's him. He's invisible. Oh, Uncle Dudley, now, you're not going to start that again, are you? Because it is ridiculous. It is preposterous. Ah, 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 ah. It's Chuck, I told you. He's an invisible chimp. I don't care what he is. I like invisible things in my hair. Are you sure he's there? Sure, I'm sure he's sitting right here. Great, then we got him. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, not so great. We don't got him. Ah, <laughs> oh, now that is an excellent serigraph. Yes, number three of ten, Mr. Edwards. Do you have any of her oils? Two. In the vault, because of those dreadful robberies. <laughs> dreadful is the word. I can understand thieves stealing money. But art? I mean, it's tragic. Yes. Well, it is dreadful, I know. It's something more of an organic oh, nature. I have another piece you might like. To... Oh, please pardon the inconvenience. That's quite all right. Yes. Right over here. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yes. It still
Chuck, here's your favorite fruit. Chuck, Chuck. looks delicious, Chuck. Come and get it. The banana, Chuck. Chuck. Come and get the banana. Be a Is good monkey. Chuck. 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 Are you? Come get the Chuck. banana, Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Come and get the banana, Chuck. 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 He's back in his cage. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now you stay in there. I have to discover exactly what happened to you. Uh, you don't have any idea how Chuck became invisible? Not exactly. He, he must have mixed the chemicals in some random order. It's incredible. Every single cell in his body is invisible. And look, see, he's the, there. You, he's the same size. He's no bigger. He's no smaller. He's just invisible. Oh, it's okay, Chuck. It's all right. Every hydrocarbon molecule in his body reacted to the mixture, and chimps are completely composed of hydrocarbons, same as human beings. It's just so hard to believe something like that could happen. You know, I didn't think it was possible, but somehow he mixed the formula that did it. Holy hydrogen. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Uncle Dudley, you only say holy hydrogen when something dreadfully terrible has happened. What happened? This isn't dreadfully terrible, it's just... It's just what? Holy hydrogen! Did you touch that liquid there in the table? Yeah, but I was wiping it up. <laughs> Quiet, Chuck, this is all your fault. Yeah, Chuck. <laughs> Sandy, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say. Is it... Just my hands and arms, or am I like this all over? I don't know. Okay. Well, I guess I might as well unbutton my blouse and see. I'm your uncle, not your aunt. Then turn around. Uncle Dudley. I'm over here. Over where? By the mirror. I don't see anything. That's me. <laughs> the invisible woman. Oh, Uncle Dudley. This is dreadfully terrible. What a thing to do to my own niece. Oh, it's not your fault. I... I promised your folks I'd take care of you, and now I can't even find you. I guess I should have worn earrings. There, there. Just put your head on my shoulder, wherever you are. We, we'll work things out somehow. Angelo, your wife is making her homemade sauce. No, it's Prego spaghetti sauce. 
Angelo Napolitano's wife using sauce from a jar? What about that good stuff she puts in her sauce? Mm -hmm. It's in there. Mmm, little bits of oregano, basil, parsley. <laughs> See? It's in there. Hey, what about that great homemade taste, huh? It's in there. Prego spaghetti sauce. All natural ingredients, homemade taste. It's in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember Jim Murphy? Graduated last year. Uh, tall, skinny kid? Yeah, you remember. The philosopher. <laughs> Murphy the mouth. Had an argument for everything. Oh, if I had a dollar for every hour of argument. Well, he's driving some college professor crazy now. He called me today. Yeah? Really? Yeah. And what did Mr. Socrates have to say? <laughs> what didn't he say? I didn't get a word in edgewise. Reach out and touch it, Hi. Oh, she's here. Are you okay? Hi. Thanks for coming, Madge. We're warming up for my show. Our first exercise, ladies. Hide the hands. It's dishwashing. What do I try? Everything. And use palm olive liquid. You're softening in it. Mmm. Feels soft like a lotion. Must be mild. But how does it clean? Beautifully. Makes a whole sink full of thick, long-lasting suds. And palm olive softens hands while you do dishes. Madge, you and palm olive really shaped up. Well, you should see us in a bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, palm olive softens hands while you do dishes. Little sisters never change. She still bugs me when I use Colgate Winter Fresh Gel. Love that super looking gel. Mmm. My turn. What a cool taste. It's my turn. Mom. Colgate Winter Fresh Gel is a creamy blue gel packed with proven MFP fluoride, the maximum fluoride protection a toothpaste can give. Scott, what have I told you? It's good for both of us. Regular flavor Colgate or Colgate Winter Fresh Gel, maximum fluoride protection in a great tasting gel. Okay, Doc. Give it to me straight. How long is this thing gonna last, anyway? You mean exactly? Yeah. When am I gonna look in the mirror and see good old me? Sandy, I think you better sit down. Yeah. Right. The truth is, I don't know. Chuck became invisible and hasn't reappeared yet. For all I know, it could be... Permanent? Until I find a way to reverse it. Oh, invisible? Permanently? What's gonna happen to me? And to my job? Uncle Dudley, you have just ruined my entire life. I didn't mean it. Well, neither did Mrs. O'Leary's cow, but Chicago still went up its smoke. Look at the bright side. There isn't any. I thought I came over here to get a great story and... Wait a minute. There is a bright side. There is? Yeah. Who are you calling? The Express. Even though it happened to me, it is my first big story. Yeah, Dolores, put me through to Mr. Gilmore. No, wait, not yet. Yeah, Martinson, what do you got? Only the biggest story of the year. Like what? Sandy, you only have half a story. What? What is the biggest story of the year? When I duplicate the formula and make you visible again, that's the story. Listen, Sandy, I am a very busy editor. Now, what is the biggest story of the year, or do you want me to read it in the post? You know Gilmore. He wants facts and proof and impact drive and pizzazz. Sandy, I'm waiting. Yeah, uh, Mr. Gilmore, uh, did you know that uh, Congress just turned down a request to paint the Washington Monument red, white, and blue in honor of National Barber's Week? Huh? <laughs> Martinson? Sometimes I think you have nothing between your ears. He doesn't know how right he is. <sighs> Thank you, Sandy. Once I reconstruct the formula that Chuck mixed, I can reverse it. Then I'll be able to control visibility invisibility. What a story that will be, hmm? Hey, that's right. I better work in this project at home. There'll be too many questions here at the lab. Yeah, I better work at home, too. There's going to be too many questions to express. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Dudley, we have got to figure out something. 
I promise you, Sandy, I'll work on it day and night, and so will Chuck. All right. Well, I can't stay wrapped up like this forever. In the meantime, I hope we don't run into any suspicious characters Hello, like... Hello, Dr. Plunkett. Hi, Rodney. How are you? Just fine. How are you? Just fine. Bye, Rodney. I'd be waiting to talk to Sandy. Is that you? Uh, uh, yes, Rodney. I, I have a bad cold. I, I don't want to breathe on anyone. Oh, you can breathe on me, Sandy. Then I won't have to go to school. Bye, Rodney. Boy, that's a great cage. What are you going to put in there? We'll think of something. Bye, Rodney. I can loan you my hamster. My mother hates him. Ah, that's nice. Bye, Rodney. <laughs> Did you say something, Dr. Plunkett? No, uh, no, Rodney, that was me. Uh, remember, I have a cold. Not the sneezing. That sounded like a monkey. A monkey? That was me, Rodney. You? Yes. You see, if I ever decide to give up uh, science, I'm going to go into show business and do imitations of a monkey. <laughs> I never heard of anybody imitating monkeys. Most of the time, they imitate John Wayne. Hold it right there. That's a good imitation. Bye, Rodney. But I've got to talk to Sandy. I'm a reporter on my school paper, and you promised to help me. Uh, right, Rodney. I will, I will. And you also told me reporters should ask questions. Remember? Yes. Well, I've got a lot of questions. Like, why are you wearing Dr. Plunkett's lab coat? Why are you wearing Dr. Plunkett's galoshes? Why are you wearing Dr. Plunkett's baseball cap? Uh, Rodney, those are all very good questions. Thanks. Bye, Bye Rodney. Rodney. <laughs> I still can't get used to you walking around like that. It's spooky. Sorry. Walking around nude, I was beginning to feel like a playmate of the month. I saw Playboy once. The playmate was very, very visible. Uncle Dudley, you have got to find a cure. I will, I will. I'll find a cure if it takes me 50 years. 50 years? Great. What am I supposed to do in the meantime? Go through life as a clothes hanger? <laughs> clothes? Clothes? Yeah, clothes. If I can see your clothes, I can see anything you put on. Like a wig and makeup. Sandy, you can be visible again. That's how I was brought up. I'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs> Don't go away. Oh, who'd know? Some help. Oh, this? I'm trying it for a friend. Uh, a girlfriend. A customer is always right. Mm. But why doesn't your girlfriend come in and try it? Uh, she's not quite herself today. Oh, that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Does that foundation base seem right? Oh, it's perfect. It's got great skin tone. She has some condition. I'll take 24 bottles. 24 bottles? Unless you sell it by the gallon. <laughs> Take baths. <laughs> Hello? Okay, Martinson. Where is it? Where's what? The follow up on the art robberies. Oh, I I'm piping at home today, sir. Oh, really? Why, aren't the typewriters at the Express good enough for you? No, I just don't feel 100% today, Mr. Gilmore. You don't mind me typing at home, do you? I don't mind if you type upside down in a yoga class, <laughs> as long as you get the story in. Don't worry, sir. I'll deliver the story. Good. 
Deliver the story, or you'll deliver the papers. <laughs> Lipstick on, stuff on my teeth. How do I look? Fine, I hope. I'm still not sure this is gonna work, though. I'm not sure either. I very rarely deal with this kind of a problem. Now, try these. Ooh, you almost poked me in the eye. <laughs> Sorry, you better do it yourself. Huh? So far, so good. Hmm? Now, let's do the makeup, the hands. Ah, right. oh, yay, fingers. Turn them over. That's great. Now let's give you a face. Ah, sounds good to me. It's working. your feet. <laughs> right. No problem. <laughs> oh. oh, Uncle Dudley, I, I think I'll do this part alone, huh? Sorry. <laughs> I'll wait outside. We were supposed to play the White Sox, but the game got canceled on account of rain. Gave me this idea for a great headline. Socks washed out, huh? <laughs> I thought it was funny. Hey, what's with the shades? Yeah, uh, ice drain. <clears throat> I have to wear these for a while. Hartinson, get in here! Good luck. Thanks. Uh, by the way, Spike, how do I look? Ask me that after Gilmore gets through with you. Right. Uh, is that my story on the art robbery, sir? Oh, yes. I don't blame you for wearing the dark glasses. I would try to hide my identity, too. <laughs> Where is the impact, the drive, the pizzazz? This story reads with all of the excitement of uh, dry cleaning instructions. <laughs> uh, I can explain, sir. I've had some personal problems. <laughs> A reporter is not entitled to personal problems, especially a trainee. 
I'd be happy to rewrite it, sir. Good. That will make us two happy people. When do you want it? Well, it's news. So try to get it back before it becomes uh, on this date in history. Yes, sir. Oh, sir. Have a nice day. I give the orders around here. Right. I knew that. <laughs> clack of the keys oh i've been up working on this rewrite half the night you don't look tired please no jokes huh i've had a rough day first i disappear then i can't even tell anybody what happened and then i get a really good chewing out for my editor gilmer has no idea what you've been through that doesn't matter i'm a reporter first invisible second hello there's been another art robbery mr gilmore of course who else would have the nerve to call someone at 3 in the morning? <laughs> the Van Damme Gallery. Get right over there. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Any questions? No, sir. Well, there should be. You're a reporter. <sighs> I've got to get over to the Van Damme Gallery right away. Oh, but getting dressed. And with all that body makeup and everything, I'm going to be the last reporter there. Not if you're invisible. Come on, let's go. I'll drive you. Dudley Moore is Dr. Saul Benjamin. What seems to be the trouble? His patients are driving him crazy. Who am I, really? Are you crazy? <laughs> then I sprouted wings and flew around the room. <laughs> and this is the woman he's crazy about. I can't treat you anymore. What? I'm in love with you. Dudley Moore, Elizabeth McGovern, Lovesick, rated PG. Starts Friday. Check newspapers for a theater near you. Search presents The Encounter. You never know when you're going to wind up face-to-face -face with someone. With Search, you're always ready. Oh, I must be in the cabin next door. Welcome to the neighborhood. Only Search has a great taste plus a glistening drop of Retson and a fresh, clean flavor to get your breath fresh enough to go face-to-face. -face. So what are you doing for the rest of the cruise? Spending it with the girl next door. Search regular and sugar-free for breath that's face-to-face -face fresh. When I drove racing cars, the racing cars that I drove were simply the best. Jackie Stewart, consultant to the Ford Motor Company. When I drive a car in the Ford Test Track, I know that it's not going to win the Monaco Grand Prix, but I know what good habits or bad habits that it has. Now that T-Bird, for example, they're very close to getting probably the best handling car of its kind. It's a whole new generation of thinking of the American car. Have you driven a Ford lately? Look who's discovered Sanka ground coffee. Mike Johnson, kayak instructor. Slicing through whitewater takes everything I've got. So I look forward to a great cup of coffee. And I found it. Sanka ground coffee, brewed out fresh and hot. Mmm, smell that. Tastes great, and it's 97% caffeine free. To me, that's smart. Sanka brand ground decaffeinated coffee, freshly brewed. Discover it. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies returns following these messages. Tuesday, I have a plan. Hannibal sends the A-team after a crooked SWAT team. Who stops him? I do. That was a terrible plan. Want some gold from the end of the rainbow? Listen. What's that you're eating? Gold fight potato chips. Ever had them before? Nope, but I'll have them again. Plus or minus the square root of 4A. What's that B you're studying? Over 2A. Golden a Flight B Cheese B Curls. Plus B Best a book I ever ate. For discriminating snackers all over town, Golden Flake chips and snacks are better than good. They're good as gold. 
WTVK, TV 26, Knoxville. We continue now with The Invisible Woman, starring Bob Denver, Alexa Hamilton, and Harvey Corman. Anxious to get the story, huh? No, anxious to get my body off this cold seat. All right, break it up, folks. No one gets beyond this point. We have an ongoing investigation. Look, there's Dan. Maybe this is your chance to make up with him. Are you forgetting? I'm invisible. Oh, yes. Besides, I'm here to cover the robbery. Don't you need your notebook? Where would I put it? <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay here, don't let anyone get in here without my word. Yes, sir. Okay, come on. Move it out. Come on, come on, no, let's go. Keep it moving. Already going. Thanks a lot. Come on, keep moving. That's it. What do you want? What do you mean? Didn't you just tap me on the shoulder? No. <laughs> There, you just did it again. <laughs> what, are you nuts or something? I didn't touch you. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, oh, this is awful. It's just awful. Try to calm down, oh. Mrs. Van Dam. When did you first notice the paintings were missing? Oh, when I came on duty and took inventory. I do that every night. And three paintings were stolen. Now, that's right, only three. Only three? Only three? In kidnappings, do you say only one child is missing? These are my children we're talking about. It's not the money. They're my children. And they took my most expensive children. Sorry, Mrs. Van Dam. We're just trying to figure out how this happened. I'll tell you how this happened. We're dealing with some very clever thieves. That's how this happened. I want my children back. We'll get your children back, Mrs. Van Dam. Who has access to the vault? Just the guards. Let's have a look around. <gasps> Open it up, please. Okay. Yes. I don't touch anything till the fingerprint boys get here. Oh, I, I won't. <laughs> this is where they were, my little ones. Now they're out there with no one to watch over them. We'll bring them home, Mrs. Van Dam. Just give us a little time. If you had children of your own, you'd understand. <laughs> Sandy? How many other invisible people do you know? What did you find out? Enough to get me my first big scoop. Look. Oh, a key. What does it open? I don't know yet, but it's a big clue. That's as plain as the nose that used to be on my face. <laughs> for a job well done. Thanks, Thanks Mr. Mr. Edwards. And now for the biggest prize of all. Cleopatra's scepter. Cleopatra's what? A scepter. I heard of Cleopatra's barge. I heard of her boyfriend, Tony. I even heard of her ass. We used to joke a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, and I use the word loosely, a scepter is a symbol of infinite power and omnipotent control. Like a credit card. 
<laughs> Not exactly. Artificionados acknowledge Cleopatra's scepter to be the finest example of ancient Egyptian design. It's encrusted with gold. Diamonds, jewels, rubies, sapphires. It's going to be ours. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> the two of you will have the honor of helping me to secure it. That'll be great, Mr. Edwards. Meet me at the club for instructions. Usual time, usual place. You're the boss. And it's a lucky thing for crime that I am. <laughs> Some more. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Oh, those contact lenses are perfect. Yeah, the gray. There's no more sunglasses. Yeah. How's the makeup cut? Let me check. Uh, yep, you're all there. Oh, thanks. I wouldn't want to leave the house without my ears or something. No breakfast? No. I'm trying to get an early start. Where are you headed? Westbrook Health Club. Remember this key I found? It's for a locker there. Maybe I'll find something. Probably sweat socks. Yeah, but whose? Could be an important clue. I'm looking for an important clue, too. Chuck and I are going back to the lab and check out every chemical that's in there. You want to be visible again, don't you, Chuck? <laughs> Yeah, well, that goes for me, too. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye, Chuck. Is. Well, it's not on this side. That key is for the men's lockers. Oh. Oh! <laughs> this must be my husband's key. <sighs> I'm sorry I bothered you. <clears throat> Lady, you're not supposed to be in this section. I know, but I just found this key and I wanted to return it to its owner. It's uh, number 2473. 2472, 2473. Bingo. That key belongs to Mr. Edwards. I'll be happy to bring it back to him. Uh, maybe I could return it to him personally. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a reward, huh? Well, a girl can hope. Sorry. Mr. Edwards is in the steam room right now. He's here? Yeah, but no ladies allowed in the men's steam room. We're kind of old-fashioned. Right. <laughs> well, guess I'm out of luck. Not really. Huh? You met me. <laughs> you wouldn't be interested. You look pretty good to me. That's just on the surface. Underneath, I'm absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chuck. I'm trying everything. Yeah, well, maybe I mixed up the chemicals in the wrong order. Or maybe I missed one of the reagents you used. It's not my fault. You should have taken notes. <laughs>
8.30. I said 8.30. Uh, we had some trouble getting in. You see, Phil lost the key somewhere. I did not lose the key. I just couldn't find it. How did you get past the attendant? I told the guy we was your brothers. My brothers? What an endorsement for Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Maybe it's a question of acidity, alkalinity, or a change in the pH. <laughs> Chuck, it's you. It's really you. Oh, if you weren't a chimp, I'd kiss you. That's why may anyone. You, you little darling, how did this happen? There couldn't be any of the chemicals I used on you, or I would have seen the change occur. That means the invisibility is temporary. And if you are visible, that means Sandy will become visible too. Oh, no. <laughs> I haven't seen her. Good. I mean, great. What? Uh, never mind. Look, as soon as she comes in, have her call me right away. It's very important. OK, bye. Hello. You reached the home of Dr. Dudley Plunkett? Vincent. <laughs> well, old man, we should drink a toast to Sandy becoming visible again. Huh. I bet you'd like a banana on the rocks, huh? He is, old fellow. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, I still don't understand why we keep meeting in such crazy places. Jogging, horseback riding, mountain climbing, and now in a steam room? Because we have to have absolute privacy. Places where no one will see us together. We can meet at the North Pole. At least we'd be cooler. Will you stop complaining? The sooner the meeting's over, the sooner we get out of here. How true. Now, let's just check over a few details before we relieve the museum of its treasure. I have a map of the floor plan right here. Good. We like maps. Now, the Cleopatra exhibit will be well guarded. Video cameras, silent alarms, even heat sensors. Don't worry. We'll get Cleopatra's septic. <laughs> scepter. Cleopatra's scepter. Ooh. Also known as the curse of the Nile. The curse of the Nile? It's a meaningless old superstition. Some people believe death will come to whoever owns the scepter. Death? That doesn't sound so meaningless to me. Is it true? Well, everyone who's owned it is dead. Oh, no. Well, look at it this way. It's 2,500 years ago. Everyone who didn't own it is dead, too. Huh? <laughs> I don't like curses anyway. Those kind of things give me the creeps. Like now, I feel like somebody's here. Oh, no. Steve's making me visible. You're always seeing things, especially after a couple beers. Beer or no beer, I got a strange feeling that somebody's watching us. You and your strange feelings. Sometimes you're even dumber than you look. I am not! Please! <laughs> Let's get back to business. I tell you, somebody's watching us. I'm telling you, there's somebody there. Come on! Sandy's really going to be surprised when she suddenly appears. Now, considering the time difference between when you first became invisible and she became invisible, Sandy should become visible just about now. I think I see something. Yeah. I think she's getting serious. Look at this. Planters dry roast peanuts. Instead of chips. Are we in the executive dining room? Planters dry roast peanuts are so crunchy, so full of delicious flavor. They make ordinary occasions special. I got a toy. Look what Mom sent me. Planters peanuts? Mom always did like you best. Not
It's Atari's video game Defender. I played on ColecoVision. Activision. I played on ColecoVision. Mattel's M Network and Imagine. We, we played them on ColecoVision. Introducing ColecoVision's first expansion module that lets you play all Atari 2600 compatible cartridges. And with all of ColecoVision's cartridges, that means you can play more games than any other video game system. It's simple. You can play Atari 2600 cartridges on ColecoVision, but you can't play ColecoVision on Atari because your vision is our vision. ColecoVision. Angora. Sweaters do a lot for me, so I do a lot for them. Whether it's cashmere, Shetland, I trust all my washable sweaters to Woolite. For just pennies a cap full, Woolite bays washable wools in safety, so the sweaters I love won't shrink, stretch, or fade. Mm. It smells so fresh. And when sweaters do this much for me, I wouldn't trust them to anything but Woolite. I trust Woolite. The bear passion, the bear power, the bear lies, the bear truth, the hot new series that strips life to its bear essence. Tiger Hayes is the golden girl. Love her, use her, destroy her. Everyone wants a piece of her. Bear essence. Jeannie Francis, Jennifer O'Neill, an all-star cast. The love of power, the power of love. Bear essence, premiering Tuesday. Chuck, according to my calculations, Sandy should be visible by now, right? <laughs> well, everybody's entitled to an opinion. <laughs> hey, something over here. There's nothing there. There is two. I feel something. There's nothing there, I'm telling you. Visibility, invisibility experiment, day three. The molecular redistribution in the laboratory chimp, known as Chuck, has unexpectedly reversed itself, and the animal has regained his visibility. <laughs> and since humans and primates share the same general cellular structure, it is the undeniable conclusion that the human experimental unit, known as Sandy Martinson, must now be visible. After a careful analysis of the chemicals involved and a study of the time factor, mankind will be able to control invisibility at will. Oh. Dr. Plunkett, that will bring you a Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll share it with you. <laughs> Plunkett. Hello, Rodney. I was expecting Sandy. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Sandy. I'm not now, Rodney. I'm working on something very important. This is important, too. There's a real mystery going on around here. Well, thanks for warning me. Last night, I happened to look in your window, and I saw Sandy's bathroom walking around. What's so strange about that? By itself. I mean, there was nobody in it. And you think that's strange? Well, I've never seen anything like that before. Well, naturally, Rodney. You see, I just invented a new fabric. You've heard of wash and wear. Yeah. I'm going to call this wash and walk. Wow. I'm going to write about that in my school newspaper. Oh, Uncle Dudley, I have got some very important news. I have some very important news for you, too. So have I. Oh, hi, Rodney. Dr. Plunkett was telling me all about his great invention, wash and walk. Wash and walk? Yes, you remember that new fabric I invented, uh, the stuff no. that makes your bathrobe walk around by itself? Oh, yeah, that stuff. That stuff yeah. That's some pretty great stuff. Uh, yeah, Ronnie, uh, maybe someday you'll see my uh, a wash and walk sweater or my wash and walk socks. Do you have a wash and walk bikini? Uh, we're working on that, Rodney. Oh, boy, that's great. But not right now. No, 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 not right now. Uh, bye, Rodney. Bye, Rodney. Mm -hmm. Holy hydrogen, I'm glad you're back. I've got big news. Not compared to the news I have. No, I can write a story about a robbery that hasn't even happened yet. Is your news bigger than that? Well, putting it scientifically, you can bet your gluteus maximus. You're visible. <laughs> I know that. No, I mean visible, visible. Beneath that face is your face. Uh, no. I just put this makeup on. 
Uh, no, according to science, according to Chuck, and according to my watch, you became visible 36 minutes ago. 36 minutes ago, I was invisible in a steam room with three crooks, and I'm still invisible now. You just think you're invisible. I'll prove it. Oh, no, I'm warning you. <laughs> Voila! Gone. Oh, no. Oh, when Chuck reappeared, I was sure that you'd reappear. Oh, that's okay. You tried. Yeah, I tried, but it didn't work. My calculations were wrong. Yeah, but my calculations were right. You remember that key to the health club? Mm -hmm. Well, it helped me solve the art robberies. <laughs> I found out that the crook is Carlisle Edwards. Do you mean the Carlisle Edwards, the millionaire? Right. He's a thief? Yes, I'm positive. Only I can't prove it. I just couldn't hang around, you know, the steam. It was starting to <laughs> make me visible. Wait a minute. You mean you were in a men's steam room? <laughs> There are some advantages to being invisible. Anyway, it's going to be a great story. You know, an eyewitness account. Yeah, I still can't understand it. When Chuck became visible, all 20 pounds of him... That's it. Chuck weighs 20 pounds and you weigh about... Uh... Never mind. Although I will admit I do weigh a, a little more than Chuck does. Yes, listen, what I'll do now is punch the difference in weight into the computer here, and then I'll find out your estimated time of arrival. There. You will become visible in exactly 42 hours and 11 minutes. Really? Oh, that is great! I can get my life back to normal again. Oh, hey. The Robert the Museum might be over by then. I better warn Dan about Carlisle Edwards. Capitol building. Congress is inside. Listen, Dan, I have got some secret information for you about the art robberies. You mean you know something the police don't know? I know who's responsible for the art robberies. Who? Who? Uh, a bowl, huh? I don't want anybody to overhear. Okay. Cindy, don't joke about a thing like this. I'm not joking. The man responsible for the art robberies is Carlisle Edwards. Carlisle Edwards has no reason to steal. He gives art to museums. Carlisle Edwards takes a lot more than he gives. That's his M.O., you know, method of operation. I'm familiar with the phrase. Dan, I have got absolute positive concrete evidence. What? I can't tell you, but it's true. <laughs> Because I'm a cop, and you're a reporter, and it's your turn. I don't care if it's my turn. I have got a lead on the biggest story of the year, and you're worried about a bowling game. Sandy, why don't you stick to writing and leave solving crimes to me? Oh, right. Just because you're a cop, you think you know everything. Okay, okay, talk, I'll listen. to rip off the Cleopatra exhibit at the Dickinson Museum. And I suppose you have proof of that. Right. And I suppose you can't tell me the proof? Wrong. I could tell you. I just can't. Not right now. Why? Are you afraid Carla Leverage may see us together? Just practice your bowling. Maybe I better. I'm not much of a bowler. Who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. <laughs> if Carla Leverage is a thief, I'm a 300 bowler.
with me? All the way. Okay. Now that you got every bit of makeup off, you look perfect. <laughs> After you. All right, you will reappear in exactly 38 minutes and 16 seconds. And wait till that know-it-all Dr. Farrington hears about our big discovery. Hmm? Hello, Dr. Farrington. Hello, Plunkett. Uh, I'm very anxious to show you my new experiment. It'll make my day. Move out of the way. <laughs> you say something, Plunkett? I said, it'll make my day, too. <laughs> There's something back here. Something soft. Orville, there's nothing back there, especially something soft. I'm telling you, there's something back here. Nonsense. Feel over here, Doc. What in the world? This is our floor, Dr. Farrington. See you in a half an hour, Doctor. Good. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Did you have to slap him? Believe me, you'd have slapped him, too. <laughs> all right, Sandy, we're all set. The Board of Governors will be here in a few minutes, and I'll say a few scientific words to explain the process, and then you'll reappear. Hey, I'll be stark naked. No, 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 no. First, I'll throw this sheet over you, and poof, you'll be there. What if I don't reappear? You will. Chuck reappeared, I guarantee you'll reappear. <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> I'm delighted you came. Please ask potassium. Well, uh, as you know, Dr. Plunkett, we're all very busy people. And I just assume that this greatest news since the wheel is extremely important. Oh, it's big, really big. <clears throat> what do you see here? A chair. What else? Nothing. Right. Oh, really big news. <laughs> it is true that what you see is nothing, but that is only what you think you see. Oh, sorry. Don't mean to interrupt. Well, actually, you interrupted nothing, at least according to Dr. Plunkett. <laughs> Just bringing Gwendolyn some food. Gwendolyn? That's Chuck. Well, I saw Chuck's cage was empty yesterday, Doc, so I put it in the corner. Brought Gwendolyn in to replace him. Oh, no, that's Chuck. That's got to be Chuck. Take a good look. Hello, Gwendolyn. <laughs> You haven't told us what's so special about this chair. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'm going to give you dramatic proof that sitting in this chair is an invisible woman. Oh, come, come, Plunkett. Yes, an invisible woman. Her name is Sandy. Through an accidental application of certain organic chemicals, which I can explain in detail later, metabolic changes occurred, which rendered her completely invisible. Fellow scientists, may I present the invisible woman? You mean there's a woman sitting in there? You actually expect us to believe that there is an invisible woman sitting in that chair? Of course. You don't see her, do you? <laughs> Say hello, Sandy. <laughs> Say hello, Sandy. Quit kidding. Say hello. <laughs> Maybe she's wearing invisible earbuds. <laughs> she's there, I swear it. Would I be standing here talking to myself? He might. He talks to himself all the time. Thank you, Orville. I will give you proof. Even though she's an invisible woman, she has substance just like any other woman. Where are you? Well, she must be around here someplace. I, I don't understand. We do. It has to do with the strain of clinical research. I move this board adjourn for today. We won't say a thing about this if you won't. It doesn't make the Institute look too good. I won't say anything. Good. 
Because we could lose our government grant for next year. Sandy, say something. Please, Sandy, say something. cat food gets its taste from real chicken protein, real milk protein, and real tuna protein. Not flavors, but the real protein-rich foods cats crave. My kitty cat craves, crave. Protein-rich foods cats crave. With ordinary contact lenses or glasses, you wake to a fuzzy world. Now, with Hydro Curve 2 lenses, wake to a crystal clear world. It's the first soft contact lens you may wear sleeping, wear comfortably, safely, continuously, up to two weeks. Hydro Curve 2, the only extended wear lens for virtually every vision problem. So don't wake to fuzzy. Wake to crystal clear. Ask your eye care professional about Hydro Curve 2, the continuous wear contact lens. Mr. Hill, I want my money back. None of these stick deodorants stop wetness. So they aren't made to. But Arid Solid fights wetness ordinary sticks can't. It's new. Arid Solid? Look, these sticks say deodorant, not antiperspirant, because they contain nothing to stop wetness. But new Arid Solid antiperspirant fights wetness and odor with the most powerful anti-wetness ingredient. Arid fights wetness and odor. That's for me. New Arid Extra Dry Solid fights wetness ordinary deodorant sticks can't. Before you go out, you get one hat, two gloves, and four oranges. But that's not four oranges. No, this is Flintstones with extra C. But it's got as much vitamin C as four oranges. Hey, that is a lot. Four times as much as any other leading brand. So Flintstones gives him nine essential vitamins to help complete a balanced diet. Plus the extra C I want. More moms are reaching for Flintstones, because it's got extra vitamin C. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies returns following these messages. Monday. The Alice. Will a new baby bring tragedy to Laura and Little House? Then those crazy goofs, clubs, and breakups are back in an all-new TV censored bloopers. Lonnie Anderson joins Alan Funt for a funny look at us with Candid Camera's 35th birthday party. Monday on NBC. This is NBC News Capsule, sponsored by GTE. Here is Edwin Newman. Good evening. In Turin, in northern Italy, at least 64 people were killed and 20 injured today when fire broke out in the movie theater. The theater manager has been charged with manslaughter. Witnesses said some exit doors in the theater were locked. Doctors attending John Hinckley say it will be 24 to 48 hours before they know whether he will survive. Hinckley, the man who shot President Reagan, is listed in serious condition after taking a drug overdose this morning. More in a moment. Imagine solar-powered telephone calls. Gee, no, GTE. Ariel Sharon resigned as Israel's defense minister today, but Sharon remains in the cabinet as minister without portfolio. Prime Minister Begin will take over defense temporarily. I'm Edwin Newman in New York. Let's go Krogering. Join in Kroger's centennial celebration. Go Krogering now for great anniversary cost cutter specials. This week, stock up on celery. Three stocks are only one dollar. In the meat department, Tyson Grade A mixed fire parts, just 38 cents a pound, limit four. And pick up Kroger Grade A large eggs. Right now, only 69 cents a dozen. around you America seems there's nothing you can't do you're the country America where a dream can still come we're united for the world to see the future's in our hands we're proud to say America united we stand TVK, TV26, Knoxville. 
We continue now with The Invisible Woman, starring Bob Denver, Alexa Hamilton, and Harvey Corman. I'm sorry if I caused you a problem, Doc. Uh, it's not your fault, Orville. There really is an invisible woman, you know. I know. Just yesterday, I was telling that to the Easter Bunny. <laughs> You're heavy. Sandy, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you stay in your chair? I look like a fool. I'm sorry. But as soon as I heard Chuck was still invisible, I had to remain invisible, too. Why? Well, you're searching for a cure. I can fulfill every reporter's fantasy. If there's political corruption and I'm invisible, I can be a fly on the wall. I can be an eyewitness to espionage, prevent murder. Maybe even help Congress balance the budget. Yeah, you're right, but you could have said something. How? They would have heard. Now they think I'm crazy. We make quite a team. You're out of your mind, and I'm out of my body. <laughs> <laughs> If I were Cleopatra, I'd watch my step at the Dickinson Museum. Sounds like somebody knows something. Who knows? I wonder if she did have the answer. Who? Nah. How could she know a thing like that? A thing like what? It's just too crazy. What? On the other hand, who knows? Well, I sure don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what you are talking about. What the heck? It's better than no clue at all. Right. I'll tell you about it on the way there. Where? Oh, <laughs> never mind. Surprise me. Well, Bunsen, how do you like seeing your robbery story on page three? Like it? I love it. Page three is great. No, no. Page three is good. Page one is great. Well, you have to admit that I am improving, huh? Editors don't have to admit anything. <laughs> but the warning to the Dickinson Museum about the Cleopatra exhibit, that was a good angle. Thank you, sir. Was that ESP? Or did you have a tip of some kind, huh? You always said that a reporter doesn't have to reveal a source of information, sir. Never mind what I said. Just listen to what I'm saying. Well, that's what you said last time, and in this case, I... Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Anything? Nothing. Not even a hockey score. Just some art story. Oh, let me see. Excuse me, sir. Oh. Philosophist Carlisle Edwards is donating several large artworks to the Dickinson Museum to be delivered this evening. The Carlisle Edwards acquisitions include a rare Rodin statue, a Rembrandt self-portrait, and a Turner landscape. Deal, I'm sorry, but this does not sound like news to me. Well, it sounds like news to me. Maybe I read it wrong. <laughs> How much do you think Cleopatra's scepter would go for? In Egyptian money? No, if I wanted to buy that Woolworths. <laughs> About 20 million. 20 million? That's not even gift wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> you are the two policemen who wish to meet me here. Uh, how did you know we were policemen? I just looked for people who seemed out of place in a museum. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Mr. Edwards. I'm Lieutenant Williams. This is Lieutenant Larkin. Oh, what's the difficulty, gentlemen? Didn't I buy enough tickets to the policeman's ball? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edwards, my partner and I have been assigned as additional security here at the Cleopatra exhibit. Oh, congratulations. <clears throat> we thought a person so important in the artistic community might have a suggestion or two as to extra precautions. With all the recent art robberies, we sure wouldn't want anything to happen to Cleo's stick. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that, my good man. Cleo's stick is quite theft-proof. Hey, with all the cameras and alarms and additional security. Could you suggest anything else? Well, let's see now. Ah, yes, I know. Uh, perhaps electronic devices at the entrances, the way they have at the airport to detect any metal equipment that thieves would be likely to use. Good idea. And uh, just one additional guard for uh, Cleo's stick. <laughs> I imagine that would be the most likely target. Thank you very much, Mr. Edwards. You've been a great help. If there's any way that I can protect our city's art treasures, I am only too glad to help. Thank you. 
box. Thank you. Now, why would he suggest additional security measures if he's going to rob the place? He wouldn't. I still don't like it. If there's a robbery, it can be dangerous. Please, you're talking to the invisible woman. Promise me you'll be careful. Careful? Does Wonder Woman promise to be careful? You're not Wonder Woman. You don't have any supernatural powers. Bullets won't bounce off you. <laughs> Uncle Dudley, if they can't see me, they can't hurt me. Why don't you let Dan and the police handle it? Because Dan says you need hard evidence to convince the police. Remember, you're not Superman. Don't worry. Huh? I promise, I won't try to jump a tall building in a single bound or stop a locomotive. Sandy, I still don't like it. I'm going with you. Uncle Dudley, you can't. To get the story, I've got to be alone. Alone and invisible. Sandy, when your parents asked me to stay here, I promised them I would take care of you, and so far, I've done a very crummy job of it. Oh. Okay, you're right. We're off to the robbery. Yes. Next time, make sure the headline isn't blurry. I'm printing a newspaper, not an eye chart. <laughs> yes? This better be important. Where are you going? You said this better be important, and I don't think it's important anymore. I mean, it's not that important. So. Mitchell, you've already used up a minute and a half of my time. Get to the point. OK, it's about Sandy. What about Sandy? Well, I'm worried about her. I was working on the story and I ran out of paper, so I opened up her desk to get some. And? And guess what I found? The Mormon Tabernacle Choir. <laughs> <laughs> How should I know what you found? Do you want to take a look at this, please? Now, Mr. Gilmore, you may not have noticed this, but Sandy hasn't been looking herself lately. And that's why she's using all this makeup? Yeah, well, there's got to be about 62 bottles here. That's enough to cover her entire body. Well, I put uh, two and two together, and I think I got this thing figured out. Good. Now, Mr. Gilmore, it may not be my place to say this. I'm sure that's true. Go ahead. OK. Sandy works real hard here as a reporter, and I think it's a real shame that she has to go moonlighting door to door as an Avon lady. Are you suggesting I give her a raise? No, no, no. Then what are you suggesting? Uh, that I go back to work and mind my own business. Good suggestion. <laughs> What are we supposed to be looking for? Signs of a robbery. Oh, what are the signs? Robbers. <laughs> is closed. Uh, no, I'm Sandy Martinson, a reporter from the Express. I'm Dr. Plunkett. The museum is still closed. We are here to stop a robbery from happening. 
It's funny. I thought that was my job. You see, I am positive that Cleopatra's scepter is going to be stolen tonight. So you're the reporter that wrote that. You mean you read my story? Yeah. Wasn't bad for science fiction. It's news. Now, if you will let us in, we can try to stop that robbery from happening. Sorry, we're closed. Aren't you worried about theft? Not particularly. We got a lot of guards and cameras and sophisticated equipment. Tomorrow, we're getting an electronic gate right here, just like at the airport. So rest easy, friends, and thank you for coming by. No, well, you, you don't understand that we... Oh, come on, sir. good enough for what's his name. <laughs> you stand guard while I become nobody. <laughs> Phone? Yes, I'm using that phone. Must be long distance. Oh, no, I mean, I'm about to use that phone. Look, pal, I got a phone home. I'm late already. Oh, wait, this means a lot to me. It means a lot to you. Yes, I just used that phone to propose to my girl, and I'm waiting for her to call me back. You proposed to a girl on a payphone? It was an emergency. And she's calling you back. She's thinking it over. For her sake, I hope she turns you down. <laughs> Inside young trees where pesticides cannot reach, a western pine shoot borer feeds on the tender spring growth. But now we can control them safely. Tiny squares release an imitation of the insect's own scent. Developed by Phillips Petroleum, the scent confuses the adult insects so they don't mate and multiply. That means stronger trees, healthier forests, while nothing in nature is harmed. Caring for your car and more. That's performance from Phillips Petroleum. That face, that face, that cover girl face. It glows, it shows, that clean makeup face. You know, for the look of good skin, there's nothing like cover girl clean makeup. It's Noxema clean, so your skin looks fresh, feels fresh. That face, that face, that cover girl face. Cover girl clean makeup by Noxema, the makeup for that face. Ooh, that face. A lesson for the young at heart by Mazzola. A healthy diet, Tim. That's part of thinking young at heart. And that's why Mazzola is our choice for salads and mmm, crispy fried chicken. <laughs> Mazzola is the only leading brand that's pure corn oil. Our diet's delicious and designed to help me reduce serum cholesterol. Now, you're young, but not too young to start eating smart. Uh, a boy after my own heart. <laughs> Think young at heart with Mazzola. Now Lysol has a pine cleaner with a pine trio of cleaners in every bottle. 
And we're the Lysol Pine Trio. We clean to cut through dirt and grease. Disinfect to kill household germs. Deodorize with a fresh, clean scent. Now there's a Lysol cleaner with the action of pine. New Lysol Pine Action Cleaner. A Pine Trio of cleaners in new Lysol Pine Action. NBC Sunday Night at the Movies returns following these messages. If you like trucks, you love girls. If you like action with pretty curls, then look out, folks, because here they come. Highway honeys and lots of fun. Next. Tuesday, I have a plan. Hannibal sends the A-team after a crooked SWAT team. Who stops them? I do. That was a terrible plan. Chef Powers! Folks, Howard sets the pace with both sale prices and everyday savings on national brands, such as the Boss 1000 hair dryers at just $6.99 every day, Zebco 33 reels for $12.83 every day, Texas Instruments 1001 pocket calculators for $5.99 every day, and four quart bunion potting soil, three for one dollar every day. So head for Howard's, where you buy the best for less every day. Just stole this new Nissan Sentra. New Nissan Sentra. You need this car. We stole it. For only $49.49. Ultra mileage. Front wheel drive. Plenty of power. Five passenger room. Still only $49.49. I need this car. You need a Nissan Sentra. It's a steal. Got some WTVK TV 26, Knoxville. We continue now with The Invisible Woman, starring Bob Denver, Alexa Hamilton, and Harvey Corman. You all set? All set. Ooh, it's freezing. Why couldn't I be invisible in Hawaii? <laughs> Back for a second try? Not exactly. Then what do you want? I want to keep you busy talking while the reporter from the Express just sneaks in. <laughs> Look, Dr. Plunkett, or whoever you are, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Okay. And tell your friend that goes for her, too? <laughs> sure. <laughs> There's no curse, there's no curse. Why 
Why is it floating in midair? <laughs> well, there has to be some reason. It is the curse of the Nile. Who said that? Whoever steals Cleopatra's scepter is doomed. Uh, excuse me, are you the curse? Yes, Philip. Uh, I'm Darren. He's Phil. Your queen has spoken. Yeah, okay, can't Phil. Oh, I'm Philip. Uh, uh, anything you say, queen. Don't give us the curse of the Nile. It wasn't our idea to steal the scepter. Carlisle Edwards will also feel the curse of the Nile. She knows about Mr. Edwards, too. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, oh. 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 Times the charm. My niece is in there. Look, the only way into this museum is past me. What if I tried to get in? I'd call the cops. Start calling. Breaking at these gates. Wait outside. <laughs> Dickinson Museum's been hit. Let's go bring in Carlisle Edwards. Oh, nuts. Here come the cops. Let's get out of here. Think you're gonna get away? You are crazy. 
good idea. We'll plead insanity. <laughs> Closing in. Keep driving. It's all because of that curse of denial. We wouldn't be in trouble if Cleopatra didn't butt in. stick to your dental work, it helps clean in between to freshen your breath while you chew. Freedance, the one that took the stick out of gum. It can come and puts the fresh in your breath. Freedance, the one. Freshen your breath with non-stick Freedent. Hey, Joey, what's she really like? She's the most exciting woman I ever met. Atari introduces the woman of the year, Ms. Pac-Man. Just like the arcade classic, four different game screens, floating fruit, even pretzels. Honey, don't you know, I'm more than Pac-Man with a bow. Reach for Ms. Pac-Man. Reach, reach, reach for Atari. High prices have turned the great European cars away from you. Now Renault brings the price of European technology down to earth. Introducing Renault Alliance, front-wheel drive with fully independent suspension that forces the wheels to hug the road. Renault Alliance, European technology built in America. $55.95. 11.9% financing now available on new Jeep, Renault, and American Motors models. When Kevin has a bump or a bruise, a hug and kiss usually do the trick. But when he gets a fever, he needs more than affection. I give him children's Tylenol. It's the one more pediatricians give their own kids. To bring down your child's fever fast, trust children's Tylenol. Fever's down. <laughs> what a relief. Trust aspirin-free children's Tylenol, the one more pediatricians give their own children. Now safety sealed two ways. All bottles are tightly wrapped and all cartons are securely glued. Where'd she go? She must have jumped. Get the wheel. Ow. Be seated. Hey, boys. It's a curse of denial. It's Cleopatra. It couldn't be Cleopatra. She wouldn't know how to drive. Well, someone who drove chariots, this is easy. We didn't plan this robbery. Why should we be cursed? If Cleopatra says you are cursed, you are cursed. Uh, don't argue with Egyptians. He didn't mean anything, Your Majesty. <laughs> Try to go straight, we promise. Only if you throw away your weapons. Whatever you say. Very well. And don't forget your promise.
Sandy? 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 Please arrest us. We're guilty. Yeah, but Carlisle Edwards planned everything. Take us away, lock us up, and don't let Cleopatra anywhere near us. <laughs> Sandy? Uncle Dudley. Sandy, are you all right? Yeah, just a little shook up. Yeah, let's go home. Well, I'd better carry the purse, huh? Oops! Oh, no. <laughs> Stay down, I can see you. <laughs> Terrific. Oh. You're all right, stand up. Stands on his way over. I'm going to wash you away. Oh, 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 I suppose you're wondering why I'm watering a mud hole in front of the police station at 3 a.m. Yes, so uh, what are you doing? You're right, I can do it tomorrow. <laughs> Lieutenant. Oh, it's you. I assume there is some reason for this invasion of my privacy? A very good reason. We believe you're responsible for some missing art. Lieutenant, I am Carlisle Edwards. Good. They brought in the right guy. <laughs> this is an outrage. My reputation in this city is... Save it, Edwards. Two of your boys took a reporter hostage and confessed that you were behind the art robberies. Oh, dirty hoodlums. And not the only dirty ones. <laughs> nice work, Lieutenant Williams. Thanks, Sandy. Sandy? Sandy? You should have seen Carlisle Edwards in the mud. Sandy made a monkey of him. <laughs> you don't have to take that personally. Just... Riley, look at this. What? My story on the front page, huh? Oh, Sandy, that yeah. is wonderful. Museum robbery foiled by Sandy Martinson. Oh, I'm so proud of oh, you. Oh, thank you. Ooh, be careful. No makeup, no Sandy. My Sandy on page one. Hmm? Oh, and I owe it all to you oh. and Chuck and being invisible. Oh, got some mail for you here. Look at this. Looks like it could be important. It's an official letter from the Institute. You know, maybe they changed their mind about making you take a month's leave of absence, huh? Mm, that would be good news. I have to have access to the Institute and those chemicals to work on the visibility factor. Well? Well, like they say, it's good news and bad news. Upon reconsideration of your recent experimental output, the Board of Governors of the Universal Biochemical Institute has decided against requesting that you take a month's leave of absence. Oh, see, I told you. That's the good news. Oh, what's the bad news? I've been fired. We have voted to terminate your contract immediately. This action is unanimous and irrevocable. Warmest regards, Dr. Farrington. But they can't do that to you. When you didn't show up under the sheet, I guess they voted me crazy. I'm responsible, aren't I? Oh, right now I feel even smaller than invisible. No, no, it's not your fault. But what am I going to do? I need that laboratory to make you visible again. Wait a minute. The invisible woman got you into this? The invisible woman will get you out. Where are we going? You're going back to work. Huh? Here, you better wear this. What about you? Don't worry about me. I've got nothing to wear. Oh. <laughs> Now, Dr. Farrington, according to these figures, the advanced electronics are not only possible, but desirable. Can we justify the added expense? Oh, yes. My staff and I have researched it thoroughly. Well, 
And that's it. Put two video games in the executive lounge. Good, good. Yes. Great. Great. Now, is there any other old business? No. <laughs> Conference room? Dr. Plunkett is here, Dr. Farrington. Did you tell him we're in conference? He says it's important. Is there an invisible woman with him? I don't see one. Well, then she must be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let him come in. Ladies, gentlemen. Wasn't our letter clear, Plunkett? Yes, and well typed, Dr. Farrington. I just don't think it was fair. I'd like to ask you one question. Are you still seeing people who aren't there? Science is full of mysteries that cannot be explained. Don't you people ever see things that you can't explain? Never. Not me. Look. Well, hardly ever. How do you explain what happened to the equations? Well, I guess they're not making chalk like they used to. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Come, come, Plunkett. Are you actually comparing a few chalk marks with invisible women? No, no. All I'm saying is that we've all had our odd experiences. Dr. Plunkett, there's odd and there's odd. <laughs> How did that happen? Odd, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Look, all this has very little bearing on our decision, Plunkett. We all voted, and your contract is terminated. All because I wasn't able to share my discovery with you? My good man, this is a biochemical institute, not a magic castle. And if you can actually make women disappear, why don't you start with my mother-in-law? <laughs> Dr. Farrington doesn't have a mustache. He does now. Oh, it must have been like that when we came in. Oh, I, yes, I saw it. I, yes. You know, I look pretty good in a mustache. Distinguished. And now he has a beard. <laughs> There must be some explanation. Maybe science can't explain it yet, but someday I will be able to tell you my secret. Blanca, don't start that again. Just because a few little odd things happen doesn't prove that we have an invisible woman running around. Well put, Diaf. <laughs> what do you got in there, Marvin? Walking papers? <laughs> Dr. Farrington? As I said before, there's odd and there's odd. Right now, we are headed toward the twilight zone. <laughs> right, Miss Tompkins? Right. Dr. Farrington, are you sure that you and the board will reconsider my case? I'm sorry, Plunkett. But I might add that if I could believe there were some mysteries that science couldn't explain, I would be the first one to vote for your rehiring. Goodbye. Dr. Plunkett. Dr. Plunkett. Thank you, Dr. Farrington. And uh, I won't say anything about this if you won't. It might jeopardize our government grants. You got a deal, Plunkett. This meeting is adjourned.
raise a cheer to the top. Reporter in the hemisphere to Sandy. <laughs> hold the presses, hold the presses, and stop this celebration. Would you like some champagne, sir? You jest. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, which of these headlines would you say was the more provocative, intriguing, and capable of selling papers? Museum robbery foiled or invisible woman? Foils, robbery. How many guesses do I get? <laughs> How come you didn't see this invisible woman? Yeah, well, when I was... Uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gilmore, as a scientist, I can assure you it's very difficult to see an invisible woman. Right, Sandy? That's right, Uncle Dudley. <laughs> Does he stars when I kiss Grant? I love Gail a lot, more than anything. We asked Gail and Grant what they love most about each other in Close Up with Fluoride. I think Gail's got a perfect smile. Everybody wants their smile to be white and sparkle. Close Up makes them sparkle. When you use Close Up, it feels like you just brushed your teeth and gargled in one shot. I want to have good breath around Gail because I care for her. I want fresh breath for myself and the one I love. Close Up toothpaste with fluoride. Don't you owe it to each other? Long skirts, short skirts, satin PJs, we've got your color. For wide cuff, straight legs, gray felt hat, we've got your color. For bare back, jet jewels and basic black, we've got your color. 269 gleaming Revlon shades for your lips. 156 professional shades for your fingertips. We've got the Revlon color for you. For me? Hey, Nick, that's a very healthy lunch. It's just a sandwich and Campbell's old-fashioned vegetable soup. Yeah, but soup is really nutritious. No kids. Yeah. It says in this ad, nutrition experts found one serving of that soup has more vitamin A than four tomatoes or 12 ears of corn. Mrs. Nicholas Gisanti doesn't need anybody to tell her what's good to put in a lunch pail. But it looks like you do, kid. Here, you better eat this soup. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nick. Oh. Stir up the Campbell's. Soup is good food. I pack my kids' lunches to save money. So why do I spend maybe two cents more a slice for Kraft Singles? Taste. Oh, buzz! Jean Murray gets in her two cents worth. Kraft Singles are made with Kraft natural cheeses like special select cheddars. Over 25% more natural cheese than government standards require. Good cheeses make great slices. Mom! So who's going to shortchange lunch? Kraft Singles. You really get your two cents worth. Jacqueline Smith is the young lawyer some men want to destroy. I'm gonna ram your face into the law. Where's my son? And some men want to possess. Don't I want you, Michael. Jacqueline Smith, Armand Asante, and Ken Howard are caught in a triangle. You still sleep with your wife? Where desire is a trap. I want him dead more than I want myself alive. And love is more deadly than hate. <laughs> Sidney Sheldon's Rage of Angels comes to life next Sunday on NBC. Now stay tuned for Highway Honeys. If you like trucks and you love girls and you like action with pretty curls, then look out, folks, because here they come. Highway Honeys. They're lots of fun. Next, weeknights, go where the news is. Watch NBC Nightly News with Roger Mott and Tom Brokaw. It all happens on NBC. Sunday, Jacqueline Smith stars in the world premiere miniseries based on the number one bestseller, Sidney Sheldon, Rage of Angels. The bare passion, the bare power, the bare lies, the bare truth, the hot new series that strips life to its bare essence, premiering Tuesday. This is NBC News Capsule. Here is Edwin Newman. Good evening. John Hinckley, the man who shot President Reagan, is listed in serious condition after taking a drug overdose this morning. It may have been an attempt at suicide. One question being asked is how Hinckley got the drugs to do that. 
Poland today had its largest demonstration in months. Between two and 3,000 people turned out in Warsaw in support of Solidarity, the now prohibited labor movement. The police used tear gas and rubber truncheons to break it up. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, but because of the big snow, florists in the Northeast can't make deliveries. So the governors of Maryland and Massachusetts are making it Valentine's week, and so is the mayor of New York. I'm Edwin Newman in New York. Have you ever wanted to take your true love to the perfect destination, a real lover's getaway? Well, all this week, we're going to give you a world of choices. Please join us. The morning sun gets me out of bed. I wake up to the taste of milk. I've got a taste for something fresh. I've got a taste for the taste of milk. Milk, the fresher refresher, with the taste that gets you up and going. Wouldn't a cold, smooth glass of milk taste good right now? I've got a taste for a fresher taste. I've got a taste for the taste of milk. Milk, the fresher refresher. Around you, America, seems there's nothing you can't do. You're the country, America, where a dream can still come. We're united for the world to see, the future's in our hands. We're proud to say, America, united we stand. WTVK TV 26, Knoxville. This here is Sierra Madre, a small town tucked away in the Sun Belt. There are a million stories in Sierra Madre, and most of them aren't worth telling. Here's one that is. That's my son, Daytona. He drives for me at Good Shepherd Tow Service when he ain't chasing the ladies, which is seldom. And that's my daughter, Carol Lee. She likes football, hot dogs, and the Charlie Daniels Band. Ain't she pretty as a rainbow? Aren't those diapers kind of small for you? Well, these ain't mine. They're for my baby. Time Grammy winning superstar Billy Joel plays his first ever television concert exclusively on HBO Saturday. Well, we're living 